What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? This is Ring Bean. Welcome to another episode of Live Video Game Hunting, the series I started up so I can take you along with me and show you these awesome finds through yard sales and garage sales, flea markets. I'll go to thrift stores like Goodwill and Salvation Army, and I'll use apps like Let Go, Offer Up, Craigslist, Facebook, whatever I can use to get my hands on awesome games at excellent prices. Make sure you stick through to the end of the video because not only do I go over everything on a one-on-one -on -one level as well as anything you didn't see on camera, but I also announced the winner to the weekly contest giveaway. If you want in on that, the rules are super simple. Obviously, be subscribed to the channel, hit that like button, and leave a comment down below. Hopefully, something positive. If you want a little extra credit, share these videos so other people can see these awesome finds and learn how to beef up their collections as well. Links to everything in the description below. You got my Instagram if you're any questions, my eBay store because I always give my subscribers good deals. Just make sure you message me on Instagram first. You got my Twitch account, my PO Box information. Everything is all in that description. Anything that you could ever want, check down below. Guys, I am so excited. I get to add so much to my collection this week. I, and there's one item that I am just completely ecstatic about. So I want you all to sit back and relax. Let's go hunting. Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode. I hope everybody has had fantastic luck this week with finds. Let me know down below some of the stuff that you've discovered. Whether it's good or bad, I always like to hear about it. So a little bit of backstory with this first pickup that you're going to see me get here. This is one of my buddies that I have known for many, many years. He hits me up one day and he says, Reno, I got a whole bunch of gaming stuff you may be interested in. He's got some consoles, some games, and he wanted to give me first dibs on it. He didn't pay anything for this stuff, so it's just completely free to him. Whatever he made, he was happy about it, and I told him to send me a picture of it, and I asked him, I was like, well, how much are you looking to get out of this? He said 30 or $40. I could not do this to the guy. So I was like, listen, I'll give you 80 bucks. The stuff is worth a lot more than that, but I told him I'm going to sell what I don't need, and I'm going to keep the rest for my collection. He was completely happy about it. Like I said, he got this stuff for free, and he got a lot more than he was wanting out of it. He threw in this really awesome backpack, and I'm actually considering keeping it and using it this year for the flea market. I've never been one of the people to, you know, actually walk around the flea market with a backpack. I always just took everything back to the truck, but I think this year might be different. That thing was absolutely wonderful, man. It was very nice. It was huge, uh, great condition, and it was, it was a good size. So I think this may be the first year that I actually use one. And he even threw in the big tote that you see here, which I actually I want to utilize and start putting all my weekly finds in there. Uh, it just kind of keeps everything nice and together. So the first game you see right here is Lego's Ninjago for the 3DS. Uh, very awesome game that I did not have. The 3DS collection that I have is not the biggest, so to find anything like that, I'm very happy about it. Also in that copy of Ninjago, Ninjago was a copy of Lego's Chima. I don't typically keep loose DS games, so that one I'm probably going to end up getting rid of. Now, as you can see here, he's trying to point out all the flaws that you see in this bucket, but for this price, a cracked case or a scratch disc is not going to jeopardize me. Obviously, a lot of you know that I have the resurfacer, so a scratch disc is not a problem. Here, I'm checking the N64 just to see if I might get lucky with an expansion pack. It had the standard in there, but you know what? That's still okay because this was an excellent price for everything that I paid. There wasn't nothing too crazy game-wise for the N64. You'll see a bunch of common stuff. King Grippy Jr. Baseball and Glover. Um, there was even a copy of 1080 Snowboarding, which is an absolute phenomenal snowboarding game. And it still holds up well today. It's a, a lot of 64 games are really hard to go back and play, but that one's a good one. This one right here, Milo's Astro Lanes, is one that I did not have. Very happy to add it to the collection because it's getting harder for me to find games for that system that I do not have. So obviously, you know, the games are not the highlight of this whole lot right here. It's the consoles. The consoles are what make it, you know, the value of what it is. Uh, so I'll definitely be able to keep the games that I don't have. I'll be able to get my $80 back and probably profit on top of everything else, which is good because I can put that money right back into the collection. And I wanted to reiterate that to him multiple times because I did not want him to feel like he was getting ripped off because $80 for all this is an absolute steal. But he only wanted $40, and that would have been just a 
kicking the growing night. He is a good friend of mine. I told him exactly what I planned to do, and that was to keep the few games that I did not have and basically resell the entire lot to put money back into my collection. He was very happy about that. He, Like I said, he's seen a lot of my episodes. He knows exactly what I do. But you got to be honest to people like this. You can't just say, oh, yeah, I need everything right here and offer them $40 and say you're going to put in your collection, like knowing that's not the case. So be honest to people. You never know where it will get you in life. Here again, he's pointing out a flaw on that N64 controller. It got chewed up by a dog. Whether they're getting gummed on by a kid or eat up by a dog, controllers always suffer that fate. I see a lot of them that have bite marks on them. Now you'll notice here as I'm digging through the box, I see a backwards compatible Wii, you know, the GameCube compatible. But I also find this PlayStation 1 right here. And what makes this one special, you know, you got to understand, PlayStation 1s aren't really worth a lot of money, and usually a lot of them are defective. But this one right here is the 1001 variant, and it has, you can see on the back, it has the three spots for your AV cables uh, to go out, you, you know, your yellow, white, and red. Look for those. You can typically pay a little bit more for them. I wouldn't, you know, exceed $5 for the console, but when I see one of those and I see a $5 PlayStation 1, I'm about at the point now where I'm not going to pick any PlayStation 1s up, unless it's just in a huge lot uh, full of, a, you know, a lot of games, simply for the fact that you can play PlayStation 1 games on a PS2 or a PS3, so they're, you know, really only needed for the collecting aspect of it. Not a lot of people, I don't think, are grabbing these things just to play their PlayStation 1 games. Uh, they may be, but for a lot of them, they're just playing on PlayStation 2 or PS3. So anytime you see that one that has the three spots on the back for your AV cables, pick them up. They are typically a lot more sought after than your standard PlayStation 1. So here I'm sitting here talking to him about these Wii's and I'm telling him about how they are backwards compatible with the GameCube. Some people don't know that. Um, you'll know that it's backwards compatible if it has the flip lid on the top for four controllers and then a flip lid for your memory cards. That's you know, obviously the dead giveaway. If you pick up a Wii and you cannot, you know, it has no flippable lids on the top, it's obviously not backwards compatible. And again, that's what makes that Wii more sought after than your standard one right there because a lot of people like to be able to play their GameCube games on a more modern TV because you can put component cables on a Wii and they look really well done. It's really hard to get HD graphics with a GameCube game unless you're either downloading it or you're putting component cables on a Wii or using some sort of converter box, which is never usually the best idea. You want to go with as much original software as you can, so a Wii is a perfect emulator for it. Also in the box is a later edition Xbox 360, as well as a Kinect to go with it, all the hookups. The controller that he had with it was an Afterglow controller, it was an aftermarket wired, missing the dongle, but I'm sure I have plenty of 360 controllers that I can pair with it. He also handed me this other stack of games that he found before I even got there, and he threw those in with it. Nothing crazy here. A side note is if you ever see Jet Set Radio by itself for the original Xbox, pick it up. That game's been climbing in price. Typically, you'll find it as a combo pack that you saw there, but if you ever find it by itself, always pick it up. Original Xbox games, I got a feeling, are going to start going up in price simply for the fact that Xbox One has announced backwards compatibility, and they're most likely only going to have exclusive titles for that, so... If you see them and you can get them cheap, pick them up. Plus, they're great for the collection. All right, so here I am at a thrift store that I love visiting. This is a very awesome place to donate any items. It always goes to a good cause. Uh, it's the Brother Wolf Foundation. They have an awesome little shop here. I don't always have the best of luck, but I do come across some games periodically. Plus, I got my buddy Cheeto with me. He wanted to tag along and kind of see what I did. You may see him, you know... As this series develops, you may see him more and more often because he wants to come out with me and check out some of these hunts. But anyways, always cycle through your CDs. It can be a pain. It can be a daunting task just because it, it, you kind of get lost in it. You kind of fizzle out as you're looking through them. But I do like to check them periodically, and I'm glad I did because I come across this copy of Echo the Dolphin for the computer. It was awesome. Sega, P, uh, Sega PC. And I only paid a dollar for this. I'm getting it for nostalgic reasons because I'm absolutely in love with that game. It has a very fantastic soundtrack. For a dollar, if you were going to get this for resales, obviously a great deal. I think the game sells for 15 or 20 But this is one that I need for my collection because I want to collect all things Echo. Um, everybody has some series that you know they are completely attached to for nostalgic reasons. And Echo is one of them for me, so this was an awesome pickup. So this right here is going to be my favorite pickup of the week. And there he is, the man of the hour, old Cheeto himself. But the reason why this one is my favorite pickup is, number one, we are at a retro game store. They sell modern stuff as well, so I'm not going in here to hunt. I typically like to go in places like this just to kind of ogle at things I'll never be able to buy or, you know, that I just, I'm not willing to buy. 
And as you come in, you can kind of see, well, I thought you could kind of see, but there's an N64 box that's right right in the right side of the door. You can't see it there. It's to the right of it. There it is right there. I've always seen that thing. You even see me here looking at it. Like, every time I come in here, I always look at that thing. What makes that box special, you see me even pointing at it. I can't believe this. Uh, but what makes that special is I never find an N64 complete in box for whatever reason all the consoles that i have all have a box to go with them except an n64 so i always look at that thing every time i come in here and he's got a whole bunch of new stuff there was one game in here that just completely blew my mind that he had you'll see it here in a second and it is insane that it was right there in front of me the first time i ever seen this game that close to me and it's panzor dragoon saga if you do not know it is a very awesome rpg game set in the panzer dragoon series uh it's a very high-end game he wanted 550 for it which isn't terrible i just could not justify spending money like that on a game it's one of those games where if i'm ever going to have it it's going to be me finding it out in the wild but it was very cool to actually sit there and look at that thing so as i'm sitting here drooling over this game talking to cheeto about it telling him a little bit about the backstory of it I'm also talking to the owner here, going over all the things, you know, being as kind and courteous as I can, because I always tell you guys, whether you're at a thrift store, a pawn shop, wherever, a vendor at a flea market, always be as respectful and nice as you can, because you never know what, you, you know, the outcome will be of the situation. And I even tell him, I was like, man, I will buy that box off of you if, if it's, you know, for sale. And you know what he tells me, guys? You can't make this up. He says, you can have it. It's free. I... <laughs> It blew my mind that he said that. I was completely in awe. Like, I, I was more than willing to, to pay him actual money for a box, simply for the fact that it has eluded me for so long, and it has pissed me off that I have never come across an N64 box in the wild. And he gave it to me, guys. So here's the box. You can see it's in a little bit rough condition, but you know what? That is okay, because I am extremely happy to finally add this to the collection. I have been wanting a box for an N64 for such a long time. And I know some of you thinking, uh, oh, I come across them all the time. Well, you know what? Where I'm at, you just, you don't. So a huge shout out to Game Escape on Patton Avenue in Asheville. Thank you so much for this. This is going right in the collection. Plus, it's the cool Atomic Purple controller variant. So I was very happy about this. All right, so here we are at the pawn shop you have seen in previous pickups. I love going to this place. I... I don't want to jinx myself, but I typically have luck almost every time I come here. But I try to give it a week or two, uh, even longer if I can, to check back on them, let them build their stock up before I come back. This time, I came one week after I've been here before, but I'm glad I did. Check this out. You see Yoshi Safari right there, complete in box. Now, you also see Super Mario 2 right there. I didn't ask her about it. I probably should have because it wasn't there before. It could have had a 495 tag on there, but for whatever reason... That Yoshi Safari had my interest. That was the one that I was definitely wanting to see right there. And you're also going to see this lady right here smile a lot. And the reason for that is because I'm just being funny. I'm being very friendly to her. And I'm making her laugh because you know what? I'm going to get a deal in the end of all this. Now I need your help here, guys. This thing has some cellophane on there and it does appear that it has like an eight seam but from my understanding super nintendo games don't typically have eight seams if i'm not mistaken except for ones made in like mexico so i don't know if this is an actual factory sealed game if you have any knowledge of that or could give me a little bit of insight on it let me know in the comments because i am not a hundred percent if it's factory if it is factory sealed it's an excellent pickup for being complete in box in great shape for 15 it's still a good pickup and understand one thing, guys, that's Yoshi Safari had a $14.95 tag on there. I did not pay $14.95 because I got a bundled deal for everything you're going to see me pick up. I pick up five or six games plus that Yoshi Safari, and I only paid $35. Like I always tell you, and I can't stress it enough, you'll hear me say it all the time in my live pickups, be friendly, make them laugh, it's going to benefit you in the long run. So if you don't know already, a pawn shop kind of marks things at a price because they kind of expect people to haggle, but they are not obligated to give you a discount. They do not have to. If you're going to get a discount, it's simply for the fact that they wanted to give you one. So if you come in and you act like a dick, you're probably not going to get helped out. But if you're very awesome and friendly and funny, you're most likely going to get a deal, and that was the case here. So you see me pick up Blitz the League 2. That is an excellent game to flip right there. Had a 4.95 tag on there. I also pick up Red Dead Redemption, the game of the year for PlayStation 3. Another excellent pickup. 
So games like NCAA Football 14 or Blitz the League 2, there's there's a handful of sports games that hold value that you would be surprised the worth of some of them. Um, try to make a mental note of that. Anytime you see sports games, don't be like everybody else and, and look past them. Look through them and you might find a gem. Now there's a handful of games you see me skipping over that you're probably like, why aren't you looking at them? It's because I've seen them here in the past, I already know the price of them. Some of these games, they used to individually price. It seems they're getting lazier now and they don't do that. Uh, but don't worry, they're, they're marked higher than what I'm willing to spend. Here's a game that I picked up for a quick flip is Guitar Hero 5. Always be on the lookout for this, whether it's on the 360 or Wii, it doesn't matter. Sell somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks. It's going to help me recoup the cost of what I spent here. Now, it is a shame that some of these are individually priced because I have seen games here that have been here for months, and there's games that I want, like Where's Waldo here? I don't want to pay $10 for it. That's the price they had it at. It's one that I want for my collection, but it's just too high. And unless they go through and redo all their games or just do some massive discount for them, they're going to sit here for a long time because they have some games here that are marked $20, and they're, you know, they're $8 games, so... It's sad, but at the same time, I'm hoping for that one day I come in and they say all games are $2, you know, and that way I'm going to load right on up on them. Here's another overlooked game that a lot of people kind of ignore, and that's Farming Simulator, whether it's this one or the one you're going to see me pick up here, 2015. They're overlooked games. They're fun to play, and they hold a good bit of value. They're $15, $20 games. I needed them for the collection, so those are going to be two free games that I get out of all this, plus Yoshi Safari. So I got games that I'm going to be able to flip, recoup the cost, but I'm getting free stuff, and I'm getting good stuff. That's what's really awesome about it. The next game you're going to see me pick up is going to be one that I am going to get rid of. It's I already got this from my original Xbox, but this, the only reason I picked it up is it was the limited edition, and that is the Godfather. It was complete with the cardboard sleeve and in very good condition. Now, it's not an expensive game, somewhere between $10 and $12, but I'm slowly chipping at the $35 tag at the end of all this because that's all I paid for everything you want to see me pick up but what I'm trying to do is get that to be zero if not go back up into the positives positives. and that's one thing I, I feel a lot of people have trouble you know wrapping their heads around is you're not always going to find games that are fifty sixty dollars that you're paying five dollars for a lot of times you're finding games that are worth ten or fifteen dollars that you're paying three or four dollars for it's those little bits of profit that add up to give you these free games that you're wanting for your collection you got to put the work in if you want to get to it. Now, obviously, I got a few games here that are worth a little bit more than that, but I have never been one to stray away from a game that is only worth 10 or $12. If I'm only getting it for a couple bucks, I will definitely pick it up. You see me use the app that I always use, and I always have to make mention of it uh, on my videos, and that's video game price charts. It just gives me a rough idea of what that game is worth, loose, complete, and brand new. It's not perfect, but it does give me a rough idea of what the price is. So I feel like I made out like a bandit on this one. I got six awesome games plus Yoshi Safari Complete Unboxed, which is possibly sealed. They valued everything together. It'd be about $50, $55. But like I said, I only paid $35. Get out there and tickle some feet, people. Make these people laugh. Put a smile on. Be friendly. Be courteous. And you will get a deal. Never be one of those people that pay sticker price at a pawn shop. Go in there. Be, you know, Treat people how you would like to be treated. And you will find that you are getting deals always ask never be scared to all right so here i am at goodwill with cheeto and they moved their rack that had the dvds cds and vhs's up by the registers maybe they got tired of people stealing the movies and the the cds and as i pull around the corner to my surprise i actually see nintendo nes cartridges now there's nothing crazy special here no contra nothing like that but i do get dr mario and then i get mario duck hunt and then mario duck hunt with track meat on there all for two dollars a piece i pick them up because they are great bundlers for my refurbished systems i always like to throw a copy of one of those games in there with it but it's surprising to actually see them on this shelf and not individually priced behind glass now i have heard rumor that goodwills are going to stop individually pricing games and they're going to have just one set price which is how it should be i don't know if that's going to be you know store wide for everybody or if it's just going to be in certain places um here i feel that i've just caught them slipping and they got through the hands of the person that does individually price these things and put them behind the glass so two dollars a piece i'm very happy about it i have literally seen them take the same super mario brothers duck hunt and put a 15 dollar tag on it and put it behind the glass that's absolute bullshit. $2 is a lot better of a price than that.
Now, I kind of threw this clip in here for two reasons. It's more like a eat your heart out kind of situation. Not to gloat or brag, but I just think this was a really good find for Cheeto. He likes to collect and read up on manga uh, books, and he comes across uh, talking stacks and stacks of these books, and they all had a 49 cent price tag on there, which was great, I guess. I mean, I'm not a collector of them, but I feel that some of my viewers might be, and they're probably like, damn, that is an excellent steal. So I just kind of wanted to throw this out there. Um, not gaming related. I don't know anything about them. He's into them. He ended up picking up a huge stack of them himself. The other reason I want to show you this clip is because never have I seen someone in a thick leather jacket and some of the most intense pajama bottoms known to man go out hunting. And that's Cheeto for you. I grew up with this guy. He is awesome. I will always have respect for him because he is about the only person that I know that can pull this off successfully. But that's what we're doing out here, guys. Living the dream, hunting, having fun. So here we are at a game store that you've seen a few times, and I gotta pull the sleeves back on this one because they got a whole bin of games here marked at 50 cents is what the tag on the front of the cart said, but each one of them was like 46 cents. You're not gonna find anything crazy heavy hitting in here, but I am finding some awesome games that I did not have for the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, so I was very happy about this stop. So the first game you see me pick up here is Spec Ops for the PlayStation 1 Ranger Elite. I didn't know if I had this. I might. If I don't, it's okay because I can bundle it with a system. Also, you see me pick up a copy of Chess for the PlayStation 1 at 46 cents, 47 cents. It is worth the risk. If I don't have it, I'm not spending that much money. Another game here you see me pick up is Grudge Warriors. It doesn't bother me to pick up a game for PlayStation 1 that does not have the manual, simply for the fact that the spline shows you what the game is, and when it's on the shelf, you can't really tell if it has the manual or not, so it doesn't look bad. So when it does come to PlayStation 1 games, if they don't have the manual, but they have the back cover, the, the, the art for the back cover, I'm okay with that. Now, unfortunately, that Namco Museum was Volume 3 and not the Volume 2, which is the most sought after and one that I need for my collection. But I do get this copy of HSX. I wasn't sure at the time if it came out for original Xbox. I've never seen it. If it has and I don't have it, I'll keep this for PlayStation 2 until I get that one. But for 46 cents, guys, these are excellent pickups. Rummaging through these games, I come across Swing Away Golf for the PlayStation 2. Another one that I'm not sure if it's on the original Xbox or not. I know that I don't have it, so like I said before, if it, if it is on that system, I'll just keep it on PlayStation 2 until I get a copy. Because I like to have it on hand. You all know that I like to collect for the original Xbox and for all third-party games. That's the system that I want them on. But if I don't have it for that system and it came out for another, I'll keep it on it. Here I get a copy of Disney Golf for the PlayStation 2 as well. And again, that's another one that I'm just not sure about. But 46 cents, I can risk that all day. I ended up getting five or six games and it came out to like $2.98 or something. It was something ridiculous, you know. And it was a great deal for some of this. You see a lot of sports and a huge amount of common stuff. But there was some stuff that I needed for my collection, so I was very happy about it. Cheeto's got a big box of loose disc games. Everything over there was, it was 50 cents as well, but they were so scratched. They weren't even worth my time to dig through. But me being who I am, had to dig through them anyways, and that's when I found that no disc was in good condition. And it's not, you know, anything that I could resell. I was looking for anything that I might need for the collection, but they were just extremely scratched to the point where the resurfacer wouldn't even help. I mean, you can put a, you know, your fingernail in these scratches. If you can feel the scratch that bad, you typically can't save them. So I just left that bin to the side and let him, di you know, dig through them. He didn't find anything either, but it just wasn't worth it. So here we are with the last pickup of the weekend. I'm at another Goodwill across town, and I failed to realize that my glasses were not on. I turned them on kind of after I found this find here, and it is a copy of Capcom Classics Reloaded for the PlayStation Portable. Very happy about picking this up. It was only $3. It's one that I needed for the collection. These are great little compilation discs right here. They have a bunch of classics, obviously, like the name says, uh, just Capcom games, and I love collecting for the PSP, so very happy to add this to the shelf for 3 bucks. It was an excellent deal. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed all that wonderful live footage. Just like always, we're going to go over everything here on a one-on-one -on -one level, as well as anything you didn't see on camera. If I can remember anything about it, I'll tell you. If not, we're just going to kind of zoom through because it's never in any particular order because it always gets scattered around. Plus, I got this huge tote that I think I'm going to start putting my pickups in a week because it holds everything nice and together, and it just kind of scatters things. So anyways, I'm going to save you kind of for last because you're, you're, you're my favorite. You probably already know what it is watching the, the video, but that one's special. I mean, I'm so excited about it. So anyways, first up we got 
some super cheap PlayStation games right here. I paid 46 cents for these. These are it's obviously it's nothing insane or crazy special, but it's games that I did not have, and that's always great. 46 cents a game, it's a no-brainer. Uh, so, anyways, we got Grudge Warriors. It does not bother me that it doesn't have a manual. That that is okay. Uh, simply for the, what, what the hell? All right. Simply for the fact that when it's on its, you know, it's got the title on the spline, I'm happy with that. So not having a manual for a PlayStation 1 game doesn't really affect me because on display it still looks good. We got Disney Golf, which I don't think came out on original Xbox. If it did, I'll keep this until I get it. But 46 cents, guys. Uh, S or HSX Hypersonic Extreme. Again, 46 cents. And then Swing Away Golf right there. And I think I got something else. We'll probably discover it at some point this was an awesome find right here and believe it or not it sells for like 15 or 20 bucks but i got it just for the nostalgic feeling that i love echo the dolphin and that is sega pc uh for computer echo the dolphin this has the most amazing soundtrack it sounds really good i think for the the sega cd the soundtrack is absolutely mesmerizing if you've never played uh echo pick this up i paid one dollar a dollar and seven cents seven cent uh seven percent tax in north carolina Echo the Dolphin right there. Very happy about picking it up. That's just going to be a display item because I love Echo, man. It's it's it's, it's excellent. I have such a nostalgic grasp on that one. Um, all right. Oh, shit. Uh, the last pickup that you saw in the video was Capcom Classics Collection Reloaded, complete with the manual. Um, I paid $3.21. The game's a $20 game. I'm happy with that. It's one that I did not have. These are really cool because they have a, it's a compilation of a bunch of Capcom games, and you got some really good ones that I see right here. I love beefing up my PSP collection. That is very awesome to find that one for three dollars. I wish I would have got better footage because if I'm not mistaken, the footage was not that great. I think I filmed late. Uh, at Goodwill, uh, this is oh wait, here's some more 46 inch games. We got Spec Ops Ranger Elite, which I may have, but it was worth the risk if I didn't for 46 cents. And one that I didn't have was Chess. Come on now, so that's another one to add to the collection. But at Goodwill, there was just three, there was four NES games on the shelf. Nothing special, but they were only $2 a piece. And these are games that I bundle with my refurbished system. So, of course, I'm going to pick them up. We got Dr. Mario, which is a classic. And actually, this may be a label upgrade for me because that thing is absolutely mint. And then we got two copies of Super Mario Brothers. We got the Duck Hunt variant. And then we got the one that has track meat, duck meat, all that. Duck meat. Holy oh, shit. Uh, it's been one of those mornings. So, that $2 a piece on this was an excellent steal. Oh, digging into this bucket. Let's see. When I was, this was a really good find. When I went to the pawn shop, as you've seen in there, I picked up everything here. I paid thirty-three dollars or something, thirty-four. It came out to like thirty-five bucks. Um, that's all I paid for everything you're gonna see here. So first up, we got for my collection, the Godfather, the game, the collector's edition, uh, the limited edition right there. That is complete and very good condition. Very happy about that one. And then. We got, this is for resale to get this money back, Red Dead Redemption, Game of the Year. They all say $4.95 on there, but I didn't pay that at the end of Of course, I'm going to get my deals. Uh, one that I need for my collection, which is Farming Simulator, which is overlooked. These Farming Simulator games are kind of pricey, as well as Farming, Farming Simulator 15. So those are going straight to the collection. I love simulator games. And then both of these are for resale, and these are going to recoup the rest of the money that I spent. So these games cost me nothing. Guitar Hero 5. Blitz the League 2. Always pick these up. Underlook sports games. It's kind of pricey. And then last but not least when I saw this. Now I need your guys' help on this because when it comes to sealed games for Super Nintendo, NES, and you know, 64, I'm not the most knowledgeable. I, I can tell when it when it when it's a standard scene, but when it's I don't know if this is a reseal or if it's factory. But it's Yoshi Safari. And if you can see it does. The reason why I'm, I'm, I'm you know, kind of uh, skeptical on it is it's the eight seam on the back. But if I'm not mistaken, a lot of Super Nintendos didn't have eight seams on their games, except for ones that are like made in Mexico or something like that. So I'll kind of hold this here, and if you guys can give me any bit of, if it's a reseal, that's fine. I'll open it back up and I'll keep this for my collection. If it is a factory seal, I'm gonna sell the shit out of it because I don't like to keep sealed games much anymore unless they have an extremely strong attachment to me. And this one doesn't. Um, pretty cool game for the Super Scope, but at the same time, eh, I'd rather get the money for it. But I paid $33, $34 for that whole stack. Look at this, guys. Tell me you wouldn't do that. Complete in box. That's still amazing. 
Um, excellent, excellent find right there at that pawn shop. I had my boy Cheeto with me there, and we were he was learning the hunt, so uh, that was very cool. Tell me what you think about that, because I'm not, I don't, I don't know much about the factory seals on Super Nintendo games. All right, woo! Here's something you didn't see on camera. Four dollars for a Super Nintendo controller. It's a good deal. Uh, you know, Super Nintendo controllers go for 15, 20 bucks by themselves, but I need them for my bundles because I'm always out of controllers. I don't like to give people aftermarkets if I can help it. So that's pretty cool. You ne never saw that on camera. I just never filmed it. Um, all right, the first pickup you saw, we got a whole bunch of stuff to go through in this one. But the very first pickup you seen in the video was through my buddy. He hit me up and he's like, hey, I know you collect games. I watched some of your videos. I got all this stuff that he, he, uh, he he's like this boss man that like, uh, they, they go around, they, they clean out houses. They, they come across this stuff all the time, which is great for me. Um, he says, uh, do you want any of this stuff? I was like, yeah, send me a picture. And I asked him, I was like, man, how much you want for that? And he's like, man, I'm just looking to get 30 or 40 bucks. I was like, are you kidding me? That's worth way more than that. So I, I gave him 80 and I still told him it was worth more than that. Cause I told him what I want to do is keep what I need and sell the rest. He was completely cool with that. Um, so I'm happy about this. This is 80 bucks for this entire bucket right here. Uh, first off, and I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm, I'm still on the fence, but we got this really freaking nice XPS backpack. Uh, why I'm on the fence about it is because I may, when the flea market season comes up, be one of those people with a backpack this year. Maybe. I haven't, I haven't decided yet, but that was thrown in there with it. It's a very high-end backpack. I mean, the thing's huge. Um, so that may be a consideration. Tell me what you think about backpacking at the flea market. Do you want to be one of those guys? Maybe. Uh, so anyways, the rest of this stuff, again, $85. I'm not going to pull out cords and whatnot. You don't need to see that, but I can tell you all the systems are complete. Um, so first off, we got a Wii, which is the GameCube compatible. I know I had a subscriber asking about one of those. So when we get that out to the blog series, if you don't follow my blog series, all the stuff that you see, we test it. We go over everything. Check it out. It's, it's a pretty cool little thing. So we got that. It has the stand. It has two Wii controllers. None of them are Motion Plus, but it has all the hookups, everything else with it. That's excellent right there. Um, also in there we had, oh shit, you heavy bastard. We got an Xbox 360. This is the modern 360, if I'm not mistaken, like one of the more recent models um, with the super sensitive touch right here. It had the connect. This one had a controller, but it was an aftermarket afterglow without the dongle. Um, so that, that's the only one that wasn't complete, but it had all the cords with the, the, the 360 connect. And then of course there's games with it. So that was awesome right there. What other goodies do we got in here? This is a whole bucket of this wonderfulness. Ah, here we go. The one that wasn't complete missing, uh, missing the power cord, I think was the Sony PlayStation one. What a lot of people now PlayStation ones don't sell for much. They, they really don't. Cause you know, you can play PlayStation one games on a PS2 or a PS3 excuse me oh my goodness talking so fast gets me all crazy um but this is the one with the av out so this is a little bit more uncommon later release uh these are a little bit more sought after so when you're out in the wild you can pay five dollars for these if they have those av outs right there they're just more sought after they're easier to hook up uh, and they perform better typically so that right there and it had three or four controllers one controller was frayed all to hell um, so I'm happy about that. Hopefully this one works, but we'll find out in the vlog series. I just have terrible luck with PlayStation 1s, uh, but we'll find out with that one. Uh, let's see. Ooh, the other system that was really awesome. I know I got some subs asking about this. This is an N64. It has two controllers. Ah. One, of course, suffered the fate of a doggo where it got chewed all to shit. Uh, and that happens. I see that all the time. Right? There's some kid gumming on it or some dog damn biting on it. Um, that happens, but tight joystick, and then we got the green, which I do have the green, so this one will be bundled with it probably or saved for another uh, 64. Doesn't have the expansion in there, it just has a standard, but that's okay, it doesn't bother me. I mean, the hell, there ain't but what, five or six games that actually require the expansion, if I'm not mistaken. No idea. Uh, some of the N64 games that I'm excited about here, if I can dig them out. All right, we got Major League Baseball, Ken Griffey Jr. Woo! Uh, Toy Story 2, which I am I think I have it. Uh, 1080 Snowboarding. I can't recommend this game enough. This is one of the best snowboarding games. I love it. It is absolutely wild. Some people are more for, like, snowboard kids. I love 1080. I got a strong attachment to that game. Uh, Glover. Uh, very cool. I already had that one, but here's one that I did not have. I'm very happy to add to the collection. Milo's Astro Lanes. I'm 
like 80% sure I don't have that one. So that was awesome to come with all those. Uh, let's see some, let's see everything in the 64 was complete. It had all the, the cords and hookups. Let's go over some of these games that we got with it. And then that's it for the bucket because everything else is just cords and controllers, that sort of thing. Oh Lord, there's stuff everywhere. Get all these out. I like the idea of this big ass tote though. Makes me feel special when I fill it up through the week. Ah! All right, we got Sega GT 2002. This is the one with Jet Set Radio. Uh, you know, it's the common way you see this all the time. If you see Jet Set Radio by itself, pick it up. That game has been climbing in price. Uh, Forza Motorsports 3, which I probably have. I'll have to double check. Madden 07. Two PlayStation 1 games. We got Need for Speed V Rally. And I think, what was this? Yeah, the Cat in the Hat. Nothing special. Um, I'll bundle it with it later. Just throw it in. It's not, you know, nothing too high end or anything. Splashdown for the original Xbox, which I'm fairly certain I have. Amped, another good one. Be on the lookout for your exclusive Xbox titles. Those are going to start going up in price ever since Xbox One announced backwards compatibility. Simply for the fact that they're not going to do third-party games. It's probably only going to be exclusives. Uh, we got Marvel Ultimate Alliance right there. Very cool. It feels complete and very heavy. Why does he feel so heavy? What do you got, like some damn book in there? Oh, because it's a double disc. Okay. So it had Forza Motorsports. And, oh, it's a double. Oh, shit. I've never seen that. Mo, Mo, all right. Marvel Ultimate Alliance with Forza 2. I didn't know they made like a double like that. NHL 08. Very cool. Oh, Lord. The games, people. Uh, new Carnival games, which I don't think I have. That'll be going to the collection. Madden 25. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 08. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Bloom Blocks, or Boom Blocks, what the hell am I talking about? Namco uh, uh, Namco Re uh, Museum Remix right here, and there's another one, Namco Museum Collection or some shit. Uh, this one right here, I'll resell this one, recoup some of this cost right here, because I think I already have it, but that disc actually looks mint, so it'll probably be an upgrade for me. Forza Motorsports 4, NASCAR 08. And NASCAR, the game, the inside line right there. Very awesome right there. And then last but not least, we got a copy of Lego Ninjago Shadow of Ronin. And it had another game in there, which was Lego Chima, Lavels, Lavas, something like that, Journey. It's another one for me. Uh, I'll keep uh, Ninjago, but I don't like to keep loose DS games if I can help it. Uh, so that was awesome right there. 80 bucks. I mean, obviously it was the bro deal. Um, cause I mean, I was dead ass honest with him. I was like, this stuff is worth a whole lot more than that. He only wanted 30, 40 bucks for all this. I couldn't be that sort of dick and just give him that like that. That would have just been, cause obviously, you know what this stuff's worth. So I offered him 80 still, it's worth a lot more than that. And I told him that, but he was like, he was completely cool with it. He got it for free is what he said. So works out for everybody. Everybody is happy. All right. The final thing that I want to show you, you know what it is, but I'm very happy about it. So I went into a game store. I go there periodically, not not that often. Really, I just go in there just to, to ogle at stuff that I'll probably never buy. Um, and he always had this N64 box. And, you know, I've always you know thought about asking, like, man, sell me that box. I'd be willing to give him 10 or 15 bucks for that box. Simply for the fact that I have a lot of boxed consoles. Almost every single one of my consoles has a box. Except the 64. I never come across them. Like I tell all you people in, in North Carolina, people use them as damn kindling for their fire more than they would save them. You just don't see that that often down here. And I was like, hey, man, sell me that box. I finally asked. I was like, sell me that box. And he's like, dude, just just take it. But we were sitting there talking before. You know, he was a really awesome guy. And we were just sitting there just kind of communicating back and forth before I asked him. And maybe that helped. And, I was, and he just said, take it. And it blew my damn mind. I could not. Let me show you this box. The box is in rough condition. And he said that. He's like, man, is it as bad as condition that box is in? He's not worried about it. And, yeah, it's got some creases, but it gives it charm to me. I got boxes that just look terrible. But I love that. And this is the Atomic Purple version right here. Very beautiful to me. Like, I absolutely am in love with this thing. I'm so happy to add this up there on my whole shelf that has all my boxes. I got, like, three inbox Sega Genesis, three NESs, a Virtual Boy. I mean, I got Sega Saturns. Some nice stuff, but I don't have an N64 box. This was my favorite pickup of the week by far. Um, if you are in the Asheville area, Game Escape on Hendersonville Road. It's a very awesome dude. He was very cool to talk to. I can't recommend him enough. Go over there and check him out. Uh, he had some good... He had that damn uh, Panzer Dragon Saga. God damn, if I had an extra $500, I would have bought the shit out of it. 
Uh, but I don't. I just can't justify spending that much money on something that just... If it was something that just was extremely, you know, pulling on my heart, may, may, that's a hard price to justify right there. Maybe if I had a bunch of trade-in or something. Um, the, the price wasn't terrible. It's just I can't, I can't afford shit like that. I like to get my stuff for free, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully I'll find it one day, just randomly out and about. And guys, that's it for this episode. Except for the fact that we got to announce the winner to the weekly contest. Get the weekly contest giveaway. I don't, I don't, you know, last episode I almost forgot too because I get so excited looking at all this stuff. Alright, so the weekly contest giveaway winner is Chris King. All you got to do is hit me up on Instagram. You got $20 store credit to my eBay store. If you don't follow my eBay store, I highly recommend doing it now because since I am focusing on being a full-time reseller, listings are just going to be going through the roof. So if you ever see something that you want, message me on Instagram. Do not message me on eBay. eBay is real finicky about that stuff. Message me on Instagram, follow me there, and then talk to me. Say, hey, I've been looking at that. I'll hook you up with a good deal. But Chris, you got $20 store credit. If you see a game for $20, bucks, you can get it. See one for 30, you get it for 10. You can get anything you want. It does not have to be game related. I sell all sorts of shit as our store name, Zelda to Zebras. It's anything. So anyways, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. If you are not subscribed to this channel, subscribe now. All the people, because you got to keep in mind, I can get 10,000 people watching one of these episodes. And I don't have that many subscribers. So subscribe to this. Hit that notification icon. Get updated on when I post a video. Because I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.